Hi everybody, good morning. Welcome back to my studio. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Emma and I'm a textile artist. I'm very privileged to have my own studio up here in Cumbria. And this morning it's another lovely sunny day. Aren't we lucky with the weather at the moment? Although I know a bit of rain would be nice, but I'm just really relishing this sunshine. It's lovely. So today I was just thinking about what I might like to show you. You might notice that I've I've got a different sort of film set up today. I've got different video quality. I've borrowed my daughter's lovely SLR camera, which means I can show you much better quality images and pictures of the work that I want to show you. You'll be able to see it in much greater detail. So I hope that's an improvement. So today, as I say, I'm just going to try and run you through the basics of free machining because I think it's a really lovely thing to do on your sewing machine. So for those of you who are used to using your machine simply to do straight lines and do seams for um, cushions and dressmaking and, uh, you know, making curtains and so forth or bags or whatever you like to make, um, this is really good fun. You can start to produce yourself little pictures and you can create all sorts of things. Once you've got the hang of it, it's really quite straightforward. You just won't look back and you'll wonder why you didn't do it years ago. Um, so the first piece of equipment you really need is you need to be able to take your presser foot off your machine. Often you have to lower the, the feed dog teeth as well, um, but your manual on your machine will tell you how to do that. That's just, that's, you know, that's a bit technical, but don't worry about that at the moment. Um, what I wanted to show you was the kind of feet that you need to put on. Um, they're called a darning foot, or an embroidery foot or possibly a free machining foot and they come in all shapes and sizes and all different prices um, uh, depending on which manufacturer is providing them so this is this is called an open toed uh, one you can see it's got a little circle but it's actually got an opening to it which means you can see your stitching quite easily um, that's quite a big one this one's a big one again but it's and it's metal but that's a closed circle so you can see that can't you yeah, um, this one's a very small one, relatively small compared to those. It's got a very little circle. And this one is a plastic one. This is an open toed one as well, um, like the metal one that I showed you before. Um, my, my machine actually has one that's got a very small oblong to it, uh, made in plastic and it, it works great. So they're all, they're all the same really, but you know, it's what suits you and what suits your machine. You have to get one that's specific to your machine, obviously. And the way they work is instead of, like the presser foot holds your fabric really close, uh, all the different layers tightly, and push it, you push it through the machine like that. These allow a little bit of flexibility, so the foot goes up and down, which means you have the opportunity to move the fabric, and then you create the lines and the shapes that you want to, rather than just a straight line. And it's really, really good fun. Um, when I learned to do this, I borrowed, a, I borrowed my neighbour's sewing machine and I took the foot off completely because I really didn't know anything about it and I didn't know anything about this sort of thing then. Um, so I borrowed, I borrowed a machine and I used a book called Thread Painting and I just jolly well had a go and I had no idea what I was doing. So it's, things are much better. Using a proper foot is important because just taking your foot off is quite dangerous really. I wouldn't recommend that at all. Um, so these have a, this one's got a little spring um, which allows it to go up and down, part of it, go, that bit goes up and down, that's it there, that bit goes up and down. Uh, this one's the plastic, it's got like a, an action that allows that to move, so again you get a flexibility to it. So the first, the other thing you need, or to start you off, this is what I do when I teach this in workshops face to face, is I get people to use an embroidery hoop because that gives you something to hang on to while you're actually um, trying to move the fabric around. So you'll perhaps use these for hand sewing um, and embroidery yourself at home. You may have one lying around. If you haven't got one of these, don't worry. I just I can show you another technique or you can let me know that you haven't got one and I will show you a different technique. I'll tell you about a different technique you can use. Um, for the time being, we'll use a hoop. So we're gonna put the, the piece down that's got the little screw on it, put that down. This is just a piece of calico, it could be cotton sheeting, it could be poly cotton, whatever you've got kicking about in the house. There we go, we'll put that down, we'll put the other piece inside it, tighten up the screw, so that what you want is it, it needs to sound like that, sound like a drum, so that it's tight enough not to just scrinkle up when you're free machining. Now normally when you're hand sewing, you would um, stitch into this top side here, like that, but for free machining with your machine, 
you're going to stick it underneath the foot like that, that sort of action. You may have to lift your foot up a little bit because um, it's a bit of a squeeze sometimes to get this hoop underneath. Um, if you, as I say, if you haven't got a hoop, you could just use several layers of thick fabric. Um, you could put something underneath, like um, there's, there's something called Stitch and Tear, which is a, I know it's a brand name, but it's a, it's a, what's called a stabiliser. Because the thing is, when you free machine, the machine tends to eat your fabric a little bit because it hasn't got the presser foot to hold it in place. So that's that's how you get started, and this is what it kind of looks like when you get going. This is one that somebody made in a workshop of mine a little while ago. I really I kept it because I thought it was really pretty. And you see lots of little simple shapes and squiggles and just playing. It's actually got quite. Um, so the stitching is a little bit what I would call stiff and jaggedy, but that's the first go, so that's really good. And it's to do with how fast um, the smoothness of your line as it stitches is to do with how fast you drive your machine with your accelerator foot. So you need to go quite quickly, really, and how fast you move this. So it's really, I tend to move this perhaps a bit slower and use my, press of, my, my accelerator foot a bit quicker. Um, if you go too slowly, it gets all stucky and jaggedy. So go faster than you think, be daring, I dare you, be reckless. Uh, it'll stop, you know, don't panic. Because some, some, somebody came one day on a, on a workshop and she was really worried that her machine wouldn't stop because it was called free machining and the machine would just keep going. So no, you just take your foot off the accelerator and your machine will stop. So this has got, uh, this is again a sample that somebody else, somebody did, I think. No, no, I believe I may have done this one. <laughs> it's got my name on it. Um, just lots of squiggling, lots of squiggling, lots of colouring in. You can, you know, put lots of different colours on top. Um, using mainly straight, straight stitch is what I would recommend. But obviously, actually that's got zigzag on there. That's got zigzag on it. You can do the same with zigzag and it's quite good then for like filling in things, filling in shapes. This is just a really simple one with black on the calico just doing some little outlines and some filling in, just playing around and practicing. Quite simple. This one, um, we've actually added some little bits of cut out fabric in, in pretty colours. So some simple cotton shapes. I think they've been appliqued on with um, bond web or something like that. A fusible webbing, other kinds are available. And then outlined with some simple stitching. This one again, I think this has got zigzagging, zigzag stitching going on with it as well. A straight stitching, just simple little shapes. It's all fun. It's meant to be fun. Um, it's meant to be enjoyable. You can you can make them all shapes and sizes. That's just a little teeny weeny one with some poppies. This is one that I did with um, a kind of patchwork effect. So the background, I think. I'm not even sure that I bonder webbed it on really. I think it's just sewn on top of. I think this bit was bonder webbed on. And just some simple flower shapes. Um, I think, oh, that's the one I showed you to start with, so I won't show you that one again. As you get better at this, okay, it'll be, you might be a bit frustrated to start with. You might think, oh, my lines are all terribly wobbly. Well, the trick with that is you do, instead of just doing one line round something, you actually do two lines round it. So if I show you this, look. See the little plant pot down at the bottom? It's got quite wiggly lines on it, but it's actually got more lines around it and that makes it sort of a magical, it kind of looks better than just a single line. Um, so as you improve, and if you want to come on one of my workshops at a later date, this is a workshop I do called Seed Heads. Um, and it's really, it's quite simple, the simple cutouts but it's all down to the practice you get in with your stitching. And obviously don't forget, please, I've done this for a very long time. So mine's going to be reasonably, reasonably good. Um, when I first started, it was, you know, very wobbly. I've done this for 20 odd years now. So I think I've got better at it as I've gone along. Um, so what else? What else? What else? These are some pretty uh, flowers. Now this is done with reverse applique where you put a, you put two layers of fabric down and then you cut out the shapes. So I've cut out the uh, the flower shapes. So there'll be red fabric underneath and cream fabric on top. But don't worry about that. That's a bit that's that's a bit advanced. I just wanted to show you though. It's got some velvet, which is really nice and tactile in the middle. I just wanted to show you what you can, what's possible, what's possible to achieve. 
um, with a little bit of practice and a little bit of playing and, and, the, and the wish to do it, you know, the curiosity to find out how to do this. This one's got some simple flower shapes on. Again, this was a reverse applique, so it had grey fabric over the top and I've cut out and stitched these flower shapes. And I have to say, always look at the back because the back is just so revealing. I actually almost prefer the back on this one. And just see, look, it's just all squiggles. It's just squiggles. Nothing, nothing fancy, just squiggles. Um, yeah, so this is, this is a little sampler that I did just to show little pretty shapes, simple little shapes, a little bit of fabric appliqued on. In fact, there's a fun, there's a fun spider there. That's quite fun, isn't it? So you can do colourful things. You can do strips of fabric. You can put strips of fabric down and just do lines of free machining to make them pretty. Or actually, um, you know, if you've got fancy stitches on your machine that you want to use, you could use the same technique for that. But obviously that's not free machining. So that's probably not quite the right thing to be doing for this particular workshop. Um, and this one, I think it's the last one I'm going to show you because I think your know, eyes will be boggling. Little seascape, and I don't know if you can see all the lovely textures. I've used all different kinds of fabric on there. And uh, it's even got some wool on that pink wool. It's really pretty and some lace and uh, some satin, little, little all sorts of things. Bits of lace that I've cut off from other, um, I do chop clothing up, I have to say. I, I go to charity shops and buy clothes and chop them up because I get really good fabric that way. That's a top tip, by the way. And the ladies in the shop usually say things like, oh, that's a lovely blouse, and I'll say, yes, I'm taking it home to cut it up, actually. So, I hope you've enjoyed my little video. I hope it might inspire you to look at your sewing machine that's maybe sitting in the corner gathering dust and just have a go at doing something a bit different. Um, you never know where it's going to take you. This is this is now like 20 years on, 20 or possibly more. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna work out exactly how long it is since I learned to do this. Um, but it's been my greatest joy and it's so it's so liberating to do, such fun, and you can make all sorts of things with it. So my best wishes to you all. I hope you're staying safe and staying well. And I'll see you again soon in my studio for some more fun. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.